All right, so we'll go ahead and get started in about 10 seconds. So for the people who are here, what I want you to do is I want you to type a word, any appropriate word in the chat, and I'm gonna go ahead and play a word game. So type any, just type some word into the chat. I would take the first 10 words. All right, that's good. That's good. So that's enough of words that's what we're gonna do. So we're going to go ahead and play the Heyman game. And then we'll go ahead and see how to implement this Heyman game. Because I think this is a pretty important as this is a really great practice for classes that we learned from last time. You can see how classes can become useful. So while I paste this code in, I'm just going to paste the word from the chat into the Heyman dictionary.txt. All right, 10 words. All right, uh, so first of all, has anybody played Heyman before? Has anybody played Heyman before? All right. So for those of you who play Heyman, does anybody want to explain how a Heyman game works? You could just unmute and talk to uh, your fellow classmate and about fellow students about how what is how, what is Heyman game how Heyman game works. Does anyone want to talk about it? All right. So Heyman game is basically a word game, and then we'll go ahead and take a look. So there are ten words that you'll be attempting to guess. Uh, and then you don't know these 10 words, so you need to go ahead and use a letter and guess. Um, so these words can be anything. Some of easy, some is a little bit harder. But first of all, what you need to do is you can click on run. I mean, actually, this is this is on Replit because this is pretty simple. I didn't host it anywhere else. So we'll go ahead and click on run. And then notice that what we see immediately is we see five underscore five underscore, and then five underscore just represent this is a five letter word. So there are five letter in this word. And then you need to type a letter. So does anybody want to uh, tell me a letter that I should put here? Your goal is a. to just guess a letter. Uh, plutonium a. is not a single letter, but A is a, a letter. N. E. Sorry, A is the first letter in the chat. You gotta try to unmute if that's even faster, but A is the first letter and you missed it. So like A is not in this word and you, you have six chances left. That's why you have six left, you have six chances left. All right, um, I'm going to go ahead type separation. So everybody don't type right now, don't type right now. Uh, one second. All right, E is the first letter. E, let's see if E is indeed one of them. E is indeed one of them. The second letter is E. All right, one second, don't type yet, don't type yet. There you go. L, we got an L or I, I don't know. We're just, I'm just gonna call this L and it's E L L. All right, so that's 
the current word, we're still missing the first letter and the last letter. So type your H. Let's see if H is one. H indeed is one. All right, obviously the word the word is hello. So you guys the word. All right. So this is an easy one. And then let's just try again, see if we could get some complicated one. All right. So this is a little bit more complicated. This is gonna be the last demonstration we're going to do before talking about how to code this. But you can see we got the six letter here. Six letter. And then you will be attempting to guess. All right, just like this. Um, so what I will do is I'll go ahead and type a message in the chat. Once you see this message, you can type your letter. And the first letter I've seen, what if you already coded it? Um, yeah, if you already coded it after I show the demonstration, I will let you to demonstrate yours. All right. So tap your Whoops. All right. E. E is not a letter. E is not a letter. I, I is the second guess. I is not a valid letter. You have any chances left. Oh, whoops. Sorry, that doesn't count. I send it privately. All right, A already guessed. You already guessed, at, oh, you didn't guess A, sorry. All right, A is not a valid letter. It's not a valid letter. And you guys had four chances left. Have another guess. Oh, oh guys, you guys try to guess vowel first. O is not a letter. O is not a letter. All right. You guys try to, you guys can try to not guess a vowel first. You can try to guess other character first, but it's up to you guys. Uh, you. Okay, apparently this word doesn't have a vowel. I just copy and paste your guess word, so I didn't do some spell checking. So apparently this word don't have an, any vowel. I don't know why. But apparently I didn't, the word that you guys, unless you guys made a spelling mistake, because I didn't actually just, I just copy and paste this word. So, all right. All right, I'm not sure. I think there is some word that doesn't have a vowel, I guess. But you can type another guess, why? Why, why, why? Why is a great word, great letter because it appear in the positions, second position, fourth position, sixth position. So it's something why, something why, something why. All right. Go ahead and type another guess right now. N, N is not a valid letter and you only have one more chance left. You only have one more chance that's left. S, Jimmy said S. S indeed is one of the letter. S indeed is one of the letter. All right. Z. Z indeed is one of the letter. Z indeed is one of the letter. All right, let's see. What is this? L, is L one of them? Nope, L is not one of them, but this is the word. I'm not sure what this word means, but it's just some word that you guys suggested, so I'll just put it in here. So you can see this is how the entire game will work out. And um, yeah, so this is how your game, entire game should work out. And you can see it will prompt your word. And the dictionary TXT have all sort of words. This is like contain a list of words that you can guess. Um, oh, it is a word. Yeah. Uh, the word um we just we were guessing is actually a word. Okay. All right. Interesting. Okay. So let's go ahead and get back into it. 
Um, all right. So let's go ahead and stop sharing. And then does anybody want to share their Heyman project if they completed it? You guys can just share your screen right now. You should guys should be able to share your screen. Whoever share first, whoever can present first. Does anybody completed the Heyman project that so you want to share? Uh, sure. All right. Anybody else beside Kevin did a did the Heyman project? Oh, we have two Kevin's here. All right. Um, okay. All right. You, you, Kevin Yang, you can share it if you want to as well. Yeah. You, yeah. So we have two Kevin's here, Kevin Don and Kevin Yang. Uh, I didn't use the one you gave, like the first 30 lines of code, that one. You can share your Heyman project if you want to, and if you want to explain the process, how I designed it. Okay. All right. Uh, so, wait. So I did a list of words. Okay. About 400. Okay. And then, and then I did this. So I I did import random, so it gives a random word each time. And then from words, I just imported the words list, so it has all the words. And then from down here, around here, uh, so it just says about like how many tries, and then the stuff so then i did this so it let it lets you it allows you to start playing and then down here uh, this is i did uppercase because why not so then then i and then i did is alpha so you can only guess like um letters and then if I if you guess the letter, um, it will. If you guess the letter, that's what has already been guessed. It you will show up with this. And so then, else, um, if you guess the letter that's not in the word, it will say, um, whatever letter you guessed is not in the word. And then you try like you lose one life or try. And then otherwise uh, it will go good job. The letter you guessed is in the word. So then, yeah, that's that part. And then, uh, and then um, if you try to guess a word, that mean it would say you, uh, you already, if you, no, so like if you play a different game and you it guess that another word, if, if you guess the word, it will say this and then if you try, if you guess another word, um, it will just print this and then another try. So then, off if then if you guess the word, like the entire word, it will be, it, it will show you the word and then, otherwise it will say not a valid guess, which means like it, something like um, if you guess like a number or something, if and then if you guess the full word, it will print congrats, you guess the word, otherwise it will be. Uh, sorry, you ran out of tries. The uh, maybe next time, and it will show you the word here, and then that's basically it. And then oh yeah, and here, um, it will it will ask you to play again if you and then if you just type yes, uh, if you just type Y, it will allow you, it will give you another word. So yeah. Okay. So it looks like your uh, explanation is pretty thorough. Um, 
and then it looks like your code's working. Since we don't have time to like everybody present your own project and I will want to go through as well. But there's just one issue I want to mention is um, you didn't use class. So uh, in theory, so to be honest, if you're pursuing a programming career, uh, most likely this, this implementation is fine. The functional implementation, you just create different functions. But what I'm really more looking for since we're practicing this class, or object-oriented programming. I hope you guys can use class in your, uh, when you create this Heyman, because I think Heyman is a great way to practice object-oriented programming. But great job on completing this. Looks like your code is working. Great job. Great job, Kevin Don. All right. Does anybody else want to share their project? Does anybody else want to share their project? Uh, I'll, I'll share my project. Yeah, sure, Kevin, yeah. So, um, so first I just did the import random and then I did this, which just does the dictionary thing. Okay. Um, it starts here where it just does, okay, so while self is, well, so, so while your chances are greater than zero, then you can keep playing. But if it's, if, it, if your chance is zero or less, then you lose. Okay. Yeah. And then, so it just starts, please put your, your guess letter and then you just input it. Okay, could you scroll back to your definition of letter function? Okay, so there's just one thing I want to point you to. Let me go out and see if I can annotate. Yep, I can. So notice that you are using self in a function that it was that is not in a class. You cannot do that. If you see some errors, you 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 shouldn't do this. In fact, self should only be using a class. When you're using self, it should always be using under class. So you shouldn't use self but anywhere any else, even if you pass as an argument, you shouldn't do that. So what I recommend you to do is actually put all of these, okay, I don't mean to draw, but sorry for making your screen messy, but I will recommend to put all these into the Heyman game, into the Heyman game. And that's maybe gonna work. If you see some error that's have some like, when you're doing self, it's like self, I don't think it's accessible, or at least you shouldn't, whether it works or not, you, you shouldn't do self in a function. Instead, you should paste these function definition into the class. So now that we have a class here, you can just paste it right here. Um, just put well, when I put the, um, my, my, my functions under the class, it would always come up with lots of errors. So I had to remove them all back up. Okay, so errors most likely is your indentation error, or maybe not, but, oh, okay. Well, your color of your screen just changed. Well, my color of screen just changed, but okay. Um, so, yeah, but anyhow, you cannot put self into a function. So what, yeah, so if you just copy and paste them, it should work. It should work. If you see any errors, then that's most likely means, uh, you can just try to paste them into the class and then we will take a look. Okay, so first of all, it goes beneath the init whether that actually matters or not, but this actually goes beneath the init. So init should go above it. Yep, uh, right there. Let's see, scroll down. Let me check your indentation error first. See if there's any indentation error. Yep, thank you for clear all the drawings. Okay, exactly. Exactly. so you need a self dot in front of it. So basically it's something like this. It's self dot letter. Self dot check word. Okay. 
All right, and that should work. Do you want to try to type it? All right, well, it's just give you a new function. If you want, you can just paste the argument into this parenthesis um, and it should work. But yeah, so whenever you're trying to accessing something, either it's a function that you define where variable is defined by a self, where the function, you need to obviously self dot, whether it's a function name or the variable name to actually use it. Okay. All right, well, thanks for presenting your project. Great job, Kevin. Um, does anybody else want to share their projects? Uh, can I share my project? Yeah, sure. Uh, it's there, There's not like a bunch of functions, but it works. So All right, so. Basically, um, it prints itself like first. Uh, like just a bunch of dashes. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, when there's still chances, uh, you input a letter. Wait, why is this purple? Oh, never mind. You input a letter, uh, and then it goes over here to check the word and then if it's correct, you print correct. Um, and then you print the string, which is over here. And when it's incorrect, you get rid of a chance and you print wrong. And if there's no more chances, you print, you have no more guesses, the correct word was the correct word right. and else print you have that many chances more guesses and okay but uh, I, I didn't really know what letter was letter should okay so let's let me take a look at my solution so check word should be one of the most simplest function it's basically check check whether the the array, the string array, the string list is the same thing. So after some manipulation, just basically check the um, the self dot string. It's the same thing as self dot word that you're trying to guess. After you change it somehow, um, that should be that should be it. This should be just checking. It should be just one conditional here, and then print string should just print out the string. But a letter should be a little bit more complicated. Letters should be able to actually do change the self the variables, change like a letter guessing correctly. But yeah, your implementation looks like all good. All right, great job. Great job. Thank you. You're welcome, no problem. Uh, kind of missed some lessons. Well, I'm not sure about that. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm not, well, I'm not sure about the recordings. Um, well, actually no recording. I, I can see if I can send a link to you somehow, though there's only two, the, there's only first two classes. All right, that's all the recording we have. Yeah, there's no recording for last time. So if you're not here, we'll just talk about classes. Yeah, that's basically it. All right. Let me go ahead and start a new Git pod session. So what you can do now is you can go ahead and go to bit.ly slash git pod one. Bit.ly slash git pod one. And then you can see something like this. bit.ly slash git pod one.
All right. So once you guys are on this page, we're going to take a look how can we go ahead and implement the payment project using class, uh, basically. So what you need to do now is go ahead and create a file called heyman.py and create another file, a dictionary.txt. Dictionary.txt. And then uh, just, to re just to recap something, dictionary.txt is all the word that you should contain in here. So you should basically type out the word you can, hello world, Python, stuff like that. Turn auto save on, save Python programming, stuff like that. So um, these, that's what should the dictionary.txt is. It should be, it, it should be basically contains all the word that you can possibly guess. Now let's go, so now let's go ahead and Go ahead, import random. Import random. And random, again, is just for randomize something. All right. So I'm not sure if I talked about random in this class before, but um, basically, this is just for randomize something. Whoops, I just unshare my screen for some reason. This is for uh, make some randomized choices. And we'll use this maybe in only one places, we only one place, but it's still gonna be a little bit interesting to see how random works. All right. So now I'm going to go out and create a function. And this is the only function that is outside of a class. You actually technically put it inside of a class as well. And here we'll just say load dictionary. We'll actually put this inside a class as well if you guys want to, but uh, load dictionary. And the argument going to be a file. All right. This file basically means the address, the relative hash of a file. For example, you need to know what file to read because it's going to read a file and then return all the word inside of it into a list and then return it. Okay. So it's going to be something like this. We're going to say file. So in here, we're going to say this. So we will say with open file. SF pass with open file as F pass. All right, just so I know you guys a little bit more on this, but have any of you worked with files in Python? Have any of you worked with files in Python before? All right, I'm gonna assume now. So basically what this is, this is basically a way to read a file in Python. We're manipulating a file actually. So for example, if you wanna change a file, if you want to read a file, if you want to append a file, if you want to delete a file, you will use this, what we call a context manager for it. This is a simple context manager. And open a file, if you have prior like lower level programming experience, C, C++, stuff like that, you will, you will need to use a pointers, memory allocation, stuff like that. In Python, super simple. You just need to type this. Uh, with open parentheses file as f. f is the file object that's going to work with. All right. And we can type pass just for a placeholder. I'm now going to say something like this. I'm going to say words equals to f dot read. All right. After read, basically gonna read the entire file. And let's take a look. What does it pronounce? What does it pronounce? So let me go and say load dictionary, dictionary.txt. Let's go and take a look, see what dictionary, see how does it, how does Python handles with the file. So I'm gonna run this by typing python <clears throat> heyman.py. You guys see print out four words. And each word is on its own line. Okay. Uh, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and pause here for just one second. Uh, so you guys can have time to catch up. 
you guys can have some time to catch up. So we're gonna wait for a couple of minutes for you guys to type these lines of codes in. Uh, so now we just define a function, call load dictionary, take an argument called file. Then we create a context manager with open file as f, words equals to f dot read parenthesis, print out words, and you should be able to see uh, it's print out basically exactly the same thing as you see in dictionary.txt. But I'm gonna wait a couple minutes while you guys have finished this up. And you guys are free to ask me any question you have so far. Um. Mine says load dictionary is an error. All right. Um, okay. I will let you to share your screen. Okay. Like, all right. So that's because the I want to delete Microsoft.com. You need to add a right pair of parentheses here and the on index. This? Not on this line, not on this line. This line six. Okay. Now you need to iron in this as well because you need in too much. And then you didn't save this file or did you save it? I'm not sure. Be sure to turn your, you, you can turn your auto save on or just be, okay. I, I saved it. Okay, great. Um, now it should work, I think. Could you try to run this again? Yeah, I think it works. I, I don't have anything in here. Okay. Uh, also, I don't want you to try to run by click on this run button. Could you just try to run this by uh, manually typing the terminal, please? Yeah, Wait, thank you. Py is it like run.py? No. Python, heyman.py. So it's Python followed by the file. File name.py. You didn't save this dictionary.txt. Oh, yeah. Yep, there you go. It works now. Thank you. You're welcome. For some reason, my screen just keeps changing color for some reason. All right, I guess it's fine. Where's my eye keep changing color? I don't think so. It's my computer. All right. Um, okay. So now create this file. Does anybody have any questions how this file works? All right. So if nobody has any question, because this is how we looked. And then now we're gonna talk about some methods that built into string. Some methods that built into string. Um, so one method that some of you already use is this dot split method. Does anybody want to explain what this dot split method do in a string? Because at the read, going to return us a string. So you can essentially are doing dot split on a string. Does anybody want to explain what this dot split and what does it do? Come on, some of you knows this. Does anybody know what this dot split is for? Um, I think split means um it changes a um string to a list. A good guess. Good guess. Yes. I think, yeah. I think it like separates like the words and like yeah. Okay, separate the word. All right, closer. So what we need to do is word. some yeah. The separator. Just you did the did the parameters separator. All right, separate term. Yeah, 
So you, you can, yeah, so basically it's taking something like this, the step is this. So it's taking step, step or separator or delimiter. So for example, you, you're storing something like this. It's gonna be best if we can show a demonstration here. So if, if you're stringing something like this, hello world. And essentially what you want to do is you want to change it to a list, change it to a list. But you wanna get, you're gonna split this by well, for whatever space you see, all right? So for every space, it's just gonna separate into another elements, all right? So in here, now it's gonna separate the space. So now it's gonna to turn to hello, comma, world. All right. So split takes in a well, split term and it's basically gonna, we're delimiter. And this is how should you, where should I split this string? And then each part of it gonna be a, an element in a list. All right. And in here, we're gonna split by this, split by a special symbol. Does anybody know what is backslash uh, N means? What is backslash N means? Uh, is it like a new line? Yes, it means a new line. Uh, backslash, backslash N means a new line. And it's basically, so for every new line that you see, there's actually a hidden backslash N in there uh, for most program languages. So basically we want to split up by every new line because each word should be only on one line. And if split by new line, what we see, should see is the words in the list as we want it to be. All right, so now I can print out these words. Now let's take a look what words look like. You can see now, indeed, is split by any, any uh, new line backslash n. And because we've got hello world Python programming. All right, and then finally, we're gonna do this. Going to say, uh, let's see. Uh, going to say return words. It's basically gonna return list. And then here we can say five f dot close to close this. How, how to type backslash? Great question. Should you write under your uh, backspace? Should under the backspace. Where if you guys cannot find it, can you guys, for the time's sake, you guys can just uh, paste this character. This is backslash. All right. Now let me do a quick check, see if it still works. Yep, it works. All right. Okay. So uh, f dot close just means close this uh, file object or IO object. It's uh, called more formally. And then we just want to return its words list so we can work with it. Okay. All right. So now let's go ahead and take a look at how can we, uh, let's go ahead and define our main class. All right. So our class is just going to be Heyman Game. That's our class. Heyman Game. All right. Um, essentially, what it's going to do is it's just, this is just a class name and it's going to be wrapped for all the functions going to define under, okay? Our function going to define under it. And here what I would do is this. 
Here now, I'm going to start to define a few functions actually. So first of all, is it going to say init? Which is self, all right, init self. Does anybody remember what this init function is for? What is init function for? Yep, it is for initialized classes. So initial, oops, initialize classes for initialize the class. And then this is always gonna run first. So in this case, you're just gonna assign a couple variables, take a couple parameter and assign few variables to the self, all right? And recall self just reference to the instance that you created this uh, by itself. So in here you're gonna type self dot word. Actually one more thing we need to do here is we'll take a dictionary Does it actually work? Okay, that's just some new thing. You don't need to worry about that. And chance equals seven. All right, so this dictionary should be a list. This dictionary should be a list. And chance obviously should be a number, specifically an integer. Um, and then you can see by default, it's gonna equals to seven. By default, it's equals to seven. So this is what we call a optional argument. Means you don't have to define it. when you are calling this function. You have to define it. But, um, but whether they define it or not, by default, if they define it, it's gonna be whatever the, the number they provide. But if they don't, it's gonna be seven. Seven is the default value. Seven the default value. All right. So now in here, what I will go ahead and do is I'll go ahead and assign a few variables. Here I'll say self dot word equals to random dot choice dictionary. All right, notice that we imported this random. Whoops, whoops, all right. Notice we import this random from here. So uh, you can just, the basic we're using this random variable, random module actually. And the dot choice was, does anybody know what dot choice going to do in a random function, in a random module? What's random dot choice, and if we put a list and arguments, what is it gonna do? Does anybody know that? So, but know this. So, if you random dot choice a list, what will happen? What will the return value be? All right, no problem. I will show a demonstration really quick. Show a demonstration really quick. You don't have to do this. Uh, you just need to take a look at look at it. And hide it temporarily. So here I'm just going to have to define a list. And that's like a perfect definition. Choose a random element from a non-empty sequence. But let's see how it actually works. So you're going to say hello world. And that's all the two words that's having my dictionary. All right. And they're going to call high import random. They're going to say random dot choice. Here, I'm gonna put the dictionary in. And now you can see I got world. And if I try to type again, you can see it's, what did you do to get into, it's just an in, uh, integrated Python, IPython. You can have IPython just a little bit more visual and have some color coding. But you can see it's going to go out randomly give you some responses. Random world. so. It's basically just randomly going to choose any elements from this list. And that's all it's going to do. All right. All right. So that's random.choice. 
So in here, where I will say it's a soft award equals random dot choice. Soft dot letter guest is this empty list. Soft dot letter incorrect equals to this empty list. Soft dot string is arguably the most interesting one. It's going to be this. Or so a quotation on score. All right. Does anybody see something similar to this before? See a for loop and something inside of a list. Has anybody seen this before? Has anybody seen this before? If you did, what's the name of it? What's the name of this? If you did, does anybody know the name of this? All right, how about this? If you see this before, do you want to explain what's going to happen? Do you want to explain what's going to happen? So what's the self dust string attribute going to be? So it's, what's this going to equals to basically in term of self dot word? Anybody want to guess? For loop, we have underscore. All right, so first of all, this is what we call a list comprehension. Basically putting a loop inside of a list. All right, notice I will have a for loop here for i in self.word. And here this, this is like the variable. This is like the variable. And here I have underscore for i in self.word. And we have something like this. This for i in self.word. Okay. All right, so basically what's gonna happen is this. This is just going to go ahead and loop through for this, this stuff that work. And for how many letters there are, it's gonna add an underscore. For example, if the word is hello, self that string is gonna be five underscore by default. One, two, three, 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 four, and five. All right, one, two, three, four, five. Hello. Okay. All right. So this is basically how this comprehension. This is a little bit more intermediate advanced concept. So we're not gonna talk about more in this class. I'm gonna just type it and basically just going to, how many letters there are, there will be a respective underscore. All right, so then in here, finally I'm gonna say self dot chance equals chance. All right, first step. Does anybody need more time? Or we can go ahead and define next function. If you still didn't finish, please let me know in the chat, please. All right, great. Since most people didn't say anything and the only people who said is, actually the couple of people who said is finished and done, I guess we come on to the second function. Whoops, looks like I made some mistake here. Okay. All right, so now the second function we define is the check word. All right, so this check word function, what's gonna do is gonna compare the string to the actual word, see if they're equals to each other. And here I can say something like this. 
I can say uh, if we're going to use another stream method called join. All right, so you can see we really started using a lot of class stuff now. So it's basically a string dot join. And you put a list in here. Does anybody know what is this is for? I'm giving a hint. It's somehow related to split. It's somehow related to splits, but kind of work it oppositely. Does anybody want to guess what's going to happen? So for example, if I type a space, so this is basically, there's a space here and a dot join. And inside of my list here, have hello world. And let me just tell you this, it's going to return a string at the end. It's going to return a string. So what's a string is going to return? If there, this is a space, this is a space, dot drawing, dot drawing have a, a list, hello world, what's going to happen? So what's a, a string is going to return? Yes, hello world, what's a space? And basically, it's literally just going to join this by this space, whatever you put it right here. All right, so it's just literally going to join this like this. And if there's multiple words, it's going to join multiple times. All right, so this is basically it's join. And then let me just show a real demo here. So, for example, this is I'll open another iPad on your environment. Here, if we say that join. Hello world. You can see it's reset. Hello world. All right. Okay. So now in here, what I can do is this. I can say, if this empty string dot join. So it basically just going to do this. It's just going to join um, join them together without anything. And it's going to be self dot string. Self dot string equals equals to self dot word. Or say return true. Otherwise, return false. All right, notice we have a Boolean expression here. Are you using a butterfly keyboard? Okay, I don't think you can see the keyboard there. But no, I'm not using a butterfly keyboard. In fact, I don't even know what is that. I'm just a regular old keyboard. Just a regular old Mac keyboard. All right. So again, it's just going to join them together. So maybe the, what's the result going to look like? It's maybe going to look like this. So maybe we have five letter word, but you guess the H, for example, it's going to be H one underscore, two underscore, three underscore, four underscore. And you can compare with the actual word, which is hello, and see if these are equals to. Because every time what you're going to do, if you guess the letter correctly, you're going to change this underscore and disappear. Instead, it's going to return the actual word. Guess O, oh, this letter, this underscore going to disappear, the O going to be here. So you can keep checking until this, not keep checking, but it's going to return true, then it goes to each other, return false otherwise. All right. All right. One question. Your code is broken. All right. Go ahead, let you share your screen just one second. Does anybody need to remember or know the difference of one equal sign and two equal sign? Does anybody remember the difference between one equal sign and two equal sign? Uh, is it the first one is assigning and the second one is checking if it's equal? Yeah, this is assignment. Or this is comparison. All right, so for my bad 
quote unquote cursive handwriting. But yes, first one, assignments. Second word, second one is comparison. All right. Just so you guys don't get messed up. Usually one is always one equal sign is always used for assigning a variable. Uh, two equal signs usually means comparison. All right. So it's basically if they're equals to return true, otherwise to return false. So easy so far, right? Okay. So uh, yes, Peter, wait, uh, actually Ricky, you can go up perceive by sharing your screen because you said you have some error. All right, one second. So it's really simple. You just need to indent. Select all the code that's a, a circle for you and then just indent. No, I uh, don't include this function. Line 20 to line 22 inclusive. Line 20, line 21, line 22, select these three lines and indent. Press indent. Now press tab, there's no option here. At, at least I don't think there's an option for indent, unless there is. Just press tab. Okay, select line 20, 21, 22. Press tab. Press tab. Do you know where tab key is? Okay, tab key is located uh, on the right hand side of Q. Yep, right there. All right, there we go. Okay, so now you know how to end it, right? Ricky? No, no, how do I end it right? Let me see the chat. All right, great. All right. Okay, so this is a, for a few methods that we defined so far. Let's go ahead and create another method. And that's gonna be print string. It's gonna be really literally but print string is just gonna be basically the same thing as this. But instead of this, instead of doing by nothing, we're doing by space. Doing by space. So it's gonna be this. It's going to be underscore one time, underscore two time, underscore three, underscore four, underscore five. All right. You can see each of them has a space. Yep. Each of them has a space bar. Okay. Let me go ahead and clear everything. Okay. So now I'll go ahead and do something like this. Go ahead and say def letter. I'm going to define this letter function. A letter function is going to do is it's going to handle what should happen when a user type a letter. That's why it's called letter function. Because it should handle what happened when a user type a letter. And then 
here is a procedure which should happen. All right. So whether the user guessed it correctly or not, the first step is add to the letter guessed list. All right, and this is always the first thing first. Second, what we'll do, we will check and we actually take a letter here. We'll check letter is in is inside of the inside of the word. So letter is part of word. And then we're gonna say if letter is incorrect. If letter is incorrect, they want to explicitly append to the letter incorrect list. So add a letter incorrect list. And then finally, we will just say minus one chance. Minus one chance. So that's the procedure of what are we going to do. So now what I want you to do is, I want you guys to help me. So now you can see I have some comments here. So what I want you to do is I want to one, so I want to ask you guys of how you think I should write code if I know the comments. How do you think I should write the part of code? So I divide into four sections. Add the word to the letter guest list. Check the letter is in word. Okay, check the, if the letter is in the word. And then we'll go ahead and change the string. So you say if the letter is in word, then we want to change string. Change the string, the string list. And then how should we change it? Well, for every time we have stuff like this, for every time that's, uh, for example, if you guessed, if you guess H, actually if you guess L, what's gonna happen is all of these two gonna change to L. Assuming the word is hello. All right, so it's just gonna change a string and so owner's gonna replace a string. This is a little bit more complicated, but then if the letter incorrect, then add to the letter incorrect list and a minus one chance. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the first step. Does anybody want to tell me how do we add this letter to letter guest list? What message should be used? Can anybody unmute and tell me? Can anybody unmute and tell me? Can anybody unmute and tell me, please? Because I want to make sure. I mean, all right, I guess now if we want to talk, I guess we'll just follow the chat instead. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, go for it. List dot append or something. Okay, so what should the code be? What should the entire code be? So I'll just write this line of code. Yep, we're gonna use append, but how are we going to use it? Do you know how do we use it, Kevin? Kevin, do you know how to use it? Okay, Peter, that's still not entirely correct. That's not entirely correct you're really close. So Peter says something like this. All right. There's one more thing you need to do. Let me in. No, in the, like, um, in the thingy when I said append, like the bracket and the, you just add a random letter. So what, what should I type here? Like random letter. It's not random letter. 
Take a look at my function definition. Yep, we just need this letter. We don't need a random letter because this letter is what we are going to use and the letter you can assume is like the user's input. Can I send a snapshot? Uh, Kyle, do you need more time? To like- to... Yeah, I need more time to like write it down. Okay. You do need to write all the green lines. You do need to all write all the green lines. Green lines, you don't have to write it. Just make sure you have all the codes down, it's fine. All right. And then I'm gonna go ahead, wait one second there for Kyle. Kyle, did you finish the init function? When the break, break is eight to Yeah, eight. I finished in it and check word self. All right, so, okay. So, all right, go ahead and leave this right there. Okay, so um, now I guess can think about how do we solve this? How do we do the second step? How do we do the second step? You guys can think about it and then you guys can chat, send a chat to me if you have any idea. How do we do step number two? All right, Kyle, let me know if you're finished, okay? Kyle, let me know after you finish. Yeah, I'm almost done. All right, great. Thank you. Okay, I'm done with like, is there anything under letter? Uh, for now, just this. Just a self dot letter underscore guest dot append letter. Okay, thank you. All right. So does anybody want to help me figuring out what should number two be, part two, step two? I'll try implement step two. If letter is in the word, I want to change the string. So if unders want to replace it to different to the letter respectively. So like what our position are. If you guys L, the letter is L and the word is hello, then it will change position three and four in the list or index number two and three to L instead of underscore. Does anybody know how to solve this? Does anybody have any idea how to do it? Does anybody have any idea how to do it? So basically if the letter is in the word, for example, you guess L, you need to change the string uh, on the index number two and three to L. This is what you need to do on step two. So how do you guys, so what should we need to do first? What do we need to do first? Let's not even worry about the second part first. What should we do first? What should we do first? Let's not worry about change string right now. How do we, so let's talk about, so does anybody know how do we check if the letter is in the word? Does anybody know how can we do this? Because we need to use a condition statement. Does anybody know how to do this? What do you mean by can you undo in this? Uh, undo, okay. Undo is co command, command Z or control Z. Command D or control Z. All right. By the way, command Z and control Z are universal. So basically you should be able to do it anywhere. 
Isn't command like the Mac only? Command V and Control Z. All right. Okay. So let's go back to here. Does anybody know how can we check if a letter is in the self.word? The letter that user provided is in the self.word. Does anybody remember how do we do it? A for loop? We don't need a for loop. We don't need a for loop yet. We need a for loop later. How do we check if a letter is in the self.word? How do we check if sub that letter is in the word? Okay, equal equal. How do we use it? Equal equal, Kevin. How do we use it? So now it's like practice all the skills that we learned on previous weeks. See if you guys can figure out these four steps. These look simple, but they are not really. It's some tiny step are actually kind of hard. How do we use equals equals, Kevin? Chris have an entire line of code. How do we use equals equals? We have to have three canvases in here. Kevin Yang, how do we use, what do you mean by just using equals equals? Could you type an entire line of code? If what? If what? I want some of you, some of, does anybody want to guess? Does anybody want to guess what should the condition be? I talk about this using list. So try to think how can we check if a letter is in the self.org. So it's actually just like list. So it's gonna be this. Just type this. We're not gonna use the equal sequel. We're gonna check if letter in self.org. And essentially what's gonna happen is you're just gonna check whether, whether the letter is in the self that word, whether the letter is valid, basically. So you finish the first part. Second part, how do we change the string? That's a little bit harder step. How do we change the string? How do we change the string? So we're gonna go, what, we're actually gonna some, do something like this. We can say this, so. So it's gonna be for i in range, for i in self that word actually. I in self dot word. And here we're just gonna say if self dot word bracket I actually need to do this. Self dot word. We don't need to add okay. Now we're just gonna do this. Yes, self dot word is equals equals to letter. We're going to say self does self does string bracket i going to be letter. All right.
And this. So the string bracket I equals letter. This is just going to replace whatever the position is. So this is just going to replace this, for example, to whatever letter you have, for example, H. And this is how we're going to do this. All right. And then this is just going to check because we don't want to change every word, just want to change the position. The, the position in the self that word, now it's the same as word. All right. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and wait a little bit for you guys to finish with this code. And then we'll go ahead and go proceed to step number three. You guys can think about step number three. All right, step number three and four are easy now. So I hope you guys can answer it. Why is it has like the um undefined variable? Who, who am I talking to? Uh, Kevin Dong. All right, one second. Yes, go ahead and share your screen, please. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about okay. it. Yeah. Sometimes it does some like, these silly error for some reason. I'm not sure why. Okay. Right. Okay. So now, does anybody want to tell me how can I accomplish step number three? If the letter is incorrect, means it's not in itself that word. And now I want to add it to the letter incorrect list. How can I do that? How can I do that? If letter incorrect, I want to add it to letter incorrect list. How can I do that? All right, Kevin, how should I type the code? Again, I, I don't need you to explain, just rephrase my, my like the problem description. I want you to actually be able to tell me the code that I need to type. Just so I know you actually know how to type the code. Even if this seems a little bit ridiculous to type these redundant codes, still I want you guys to be able to know it. So how should I do step number three? If letter is incorrect, I want to add to the letter incorrect list. How should I do that? Okay. Okay, so here. Does anybody see any problem? Is the code okay? All right, nobody see any issue? I guess it's okay. All right, let's move to step number four. Minus one chance. How do we do minus one chance? So basically the chance is just gonna be minus one. So for example, if the chance right now is seven, it's gonna be six. If it's five, it's gonna be four. If it's two gonna be one, if it's one gonna be zero. How can I do that? All right, so, so it's actually gonna be self dot chance minus, minus equals to one, all right? Minus equal recall is just gonna take whatever it's self dot chance is. Minus equal shortcut basically means, it's, okay, it's gonna take one from it and then that's gonna be the new self dot chance. All right, so. If there's, okay, does anybody see any issues with this code? Does anybody have any problem and questions? Does anybody have any questions?
All right. Okay. All right. Can I get everybody thumbs up if you guys finish with the code? Like if you guys, actually, I'm not sure can I get that guys having a reaction. Actually, does anybody need more time? Does anybody need more time? Oh, can I have a little more time? Yep. Uh, I'm going to assume you'll work on this letter function. Again, don't have to type the green text. Just type anything, everything else. Let me know if you after you finished. All right, so I'm just going to wait you guys to finish with this letter function. No, we'll have 10 more minutes and then we'll have a break. Actually, nine more minutes now. Class ends at three, uh, I mean, not three, eight thirty. I mean, not eight thirty, but for you guys it should be 11.30. Can you scroll down? Okay, I got it all. All right, great. Does anybody else need more time? All right. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and implement a play function. All right. I'm going to implement play function. And now we're going to say while true. So it's going to wrap it into a quote unquote infinite loop. They're eventually going to break out of this infinite loop. If certain condition matches. Can I ask you guys a question? So what do you think when the game going to end? When will the game end? When the game end. What do you mean by you lose? You win, you obviously get the word. So you get the word. What do you mean by you lose? Yep. You get the word or you lose, you use the entire chance. Chance equals zero. All right, so remember these two principles. These two are the conditions that we'll be repetitively checking into our infinite loop. Because we need to know when to end the game, when to break out of this infinite loop. All right, so first of all, what I will do is I will go ahead and call this. Print self dot print string. Ooh. Effectively, we're just going to print a string. Print a string for us. It's going to print them in a nicely organized way. All right. And then here we'll say, Another while true. This is called validation. So what are we putting here? It's a validation. So validate if user's input is valid. All right. So there's a uh, there is a couple conditions we need to check. First, you need to enter a single letter. Doesn't have to necessarily be a letter. It has to be single. It has to be single. Single is a key point. It doesn't have to be necessarily a letter. All right. Has to be if it's single. All right, so you can have a hyphen against a dash. It's fine as long as you don't type two dashes because that's not a single letter. All right, and then you can say this. And then we'll, another constraint we need to check is 
if we already guessed the word. Already guessed the word. You've already guessed the word, then you obviously cannot guess it again. So that's the point of this loop. Now I'm going to try something like this. I'm going to say L is to input enter a letter here. Enter a letter here. All right. Okay. And then here we can say this. We'll say, go ahead and apply the Audi validation. So let me ask you guys, how can we apply the validation? So when you validate two things, do you ever remember what two things that we need to validate is? Do you ever remember what are the two things that we need to validate? I just talked about it. We need to validate two things. Nope. That's uh, okay. Okay, I'm I'm not okay. I'm reading Ricky's response. Sorry about that. Whoever you just want to talk. So uh, actually, let me talk really quick first. That's the first condition. I'm talking about validating users' input. All right. Okay. Whoever can talk now can talk. Whoever just unmute himself. Sorry for interrupting. You guys so, not the single yeah. letter and the choice value. And what? And what's your second thing? Thing and condition. Uh, um, the 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 value of the choice. Okay, so basically, is it in? Not in. Already guessed. Already guessed. Let's. Uh, all right. So single letter, single letter. What's gonna happen is this. How do we check if it's single letter or not? Um, the first character of line 48 is L. So how can we check it's a single letter or not? So we just check single, single is the main point, one. How do we check if the length of L is one? How can we check that? Come on, you guys know this. Yep, we'll use length. How can we use it? Could you put it into a complete code, please, Kevin Yang? I know we're going to, we're, we're going to use length. How can we use length? Yes. We're gonna put in completely, it's gonna be equals equals to, it's not equals to one. And here we're gonna say print and not, now we're gonna say print, uh, please re-enter single letter. All right. And they will never, they will not leave this loop for this iteration. All right. What about second thing? How can we check that? Not in already guessed letter. Actually, you know what? We're out of time for this break. So we'll go ahead and proceed with a break time now. Um, and we're gonna come back at, okay, you're gonna remind me lots of time zone, but we're gonna come back at 8, 10 Pacific, PM Pacific Standard Time. 11, 10, China standard time. I'm gonna write it on the board. Pacific standard time or 11, 10. I'm not sure what's the abbreviation for China standard time is. All right, so I'm not gonna be here. Uh, I have a, I need to go to get a water really quick. I uh, can kind of have a message in the chat if you want to. All right. So you guys back and 18, we're 11 to, okay, it's not PM, it's AM. AM, all right.
All right, so hopefully you guys are back. Uh, so right now it's currently 8.10 Pacific Standard Time PM. Should be 11 to a.m. for Chinese Standard Time as well. All right, great. So let's go back to our code and then finish this project up. We're probably going to need to be able to end early today. Uh, so that's probably good. All right. Now, Gonna check if it's not already guessed. So, how can we do that? How can we check if it's not in already guessed letter? How can we check if it's not already in the guest letter? All right, we're actually gonna do something like this. Okay, whoever's name is blank, please change your name to something. Whoever's name is blank, please change your name to actual name. Thank you. Uh, check the letter is already in the, okay, again. Yes. How can we do that? How can we do that? How can we check if the letter is in the letter guest list? How? I want the actual Python code for doing this. How can we check if the letter is in the letter guest list? All right, so it's gonna be similar to this. All right, it's gonna be similar to this. Oh yeah, letter in self the letter guest. And then here I'm going to say print oh, f string. You already use this letter. All right. Okay. One final thing is if it's all true, then I'm going to break it out of this loop. I forgot the toggle break work not. But break basically means break out of this loop. So end this loop entirely. All right, so I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes to finish this up. If you guys are finished, then we're going to wait for two minutes. We're going to move on to finish the rest of the play part. Press command Z, Peter, press command Z or control Z. All right, Kyle, did you finish? Um, wait, let me see. Okay. Um, no, I didn't finish. I, I have like half of it. I didn't finish. All right. You didn't finish? Okay, then I'm going to wait for you. Okay. Okay, Peter, I don't know why that happens then. Uh, the bad thing is you should, um, not sure why that happens. 
try to click on comment multiple time or try to click on, I don't know, maybe redo. So click on redo maybe, just you can take a look. Uh, I can just show you a snapshot really quick. So let's see the snapshot copy. Whoops. They're gonna paste you to privately. So you can, oops, didn't get copied. Then click on it and that should create a new Git pod for you. All right, now this new Git pod, you can click on this get new Git pod link. I send it privately to Peter. Okay. Wait, can I have the, um? Snapshot too. Uh, why do you need it, Kyle? Do you, is your like are your entire code disappear as well, or? Uh, no, not really. I just want to like. I don't want to like make the whole class wait. Okay. Because I have the exact same code as you. Okay, if you have the exact same code as me, I don't know why. You need a snapshot anyway, but okay, I guess here it is. Hopefully sent to the right person. All right. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to pass it in to the self letter function. All right, and that's going to do some processing there. Again, self letter is going to manipulate with uh, this stuff, with changing these lists and stuff like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to check the two constraints. Does anybody remember the two constraints of whether the game is ending? Does anyone remember the two conditions? The most, at least one of it is true. You want to end the game. Um, I think one either you run run out of guesses, two, you um, um, found the word. Yep. All right. Guess it worked. Great. So, first of all, how can we check chance is zero? I'm just going to call on people then. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kyle, how do we check if the chance is zero? Uh, to check if the chance is zero, you say um, if uh, chance is bigger than one. I want to check if chance is zero. Oh, so uh, if chance is bigger than zero. OK. So again, I want to check if chance is zero. So what should I type? Uh, just press if chance equals equals zero. Okay, what should I type? If? Chance equals equals zero. All right. Okay. All right. So let me ask you a question, Kyle. Do you have to find chance anywhere? Chance? Did you I define this chance? What? You defined it at the top. Can I use it here? Um, Can I use it here without self? Notice when you in class, uh, you always need self. So you here and you type self that chance. Okay, uh, Kyle? Yeah. All right. All right. So in here, if it's equals equals to zero, uh, then in here we can say print. You didn't get the word. The word is self that word. That's the word. And then I could just break out of this loop. Break. All right. Let's see. Leon, how do we check the second condition, which is if we guess the word? How can I check that? Leon, are you here? Wait, yep, yep, I'm just kidding. Yep. You guys have to be in the chat as well. Okay. So basically what you need to do is, could you tell me how can I check if the word is correct or not? If the word is correct or not, that's user guess. Type, feel free to type in the chat as well, Leon.
Okay, so basically I want to check if the word, it, yeah, okay, so basically I want to somehow use this check word function. That's what we define, okay? So now I, I'm gonna simplify for you. If the check word is true, then the world, then the, not the world, but the game over because the user gets the word. Otherwise the game gonna continue, okay? How can we do that? So how can we use this check word function to use it into a conditional statement, basically. So how can we check if the user gets the word or not? If the user gets the word, do something. If the user gets the word, then we finish the game. Can I tell me how do we do that? We don't need to do this. We just need to do this. If check if self dot check word, and then this is going to basically going to return a boolean. It's going to say true. If it's true, then we can say print out. You guys, the word. All right, and I can break out of it. All right, so other stuff we need to do now is just print out how many chances of the word that we missed. So these are the pretty simple thing. And then missed letters. And then here you can just say, um, this dot join self dot word incorrect. Uh, and print out. You have self dot chance left chances. Left. All right. So let's go ahead and run this game. Let's go ahead and say, let's go ahead and run this game. Uh, could I see the code again? Yes. Oh Here is a code. Okay. All right, so you're gonna go and run this. All right, so let's go guess the letter. So this is the, the dictionary.txt. So the sixth letter, obviously it's Python. All right, so, okay, let's see, this probably is one of my bad. If so, let's see, okay, it's not letter, it's L. All right, so you're gonna fix some issues now. To line 53, it should be L if L, it should be a letter. Type a letter again. All right, I missed it. Okay, actually one thing. Does anybody see something wrong with this code? Was what just happened? All right, so I want everybody to just stop writing code for just one second. Does anybody see any problem? See any issues when I run this? So I said, enter a letter H, missed letters H. You have six chances left. H blank, 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 blank. Does anybody see any issue? Is it that? When when you guessed H, um, when you guessed H, H was correct, but you, but you said you missed it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Great job. Why does it happen? This line of the code, we didn't check if the letter is incorrect. We did it for every letter, even if they are correct. So simple fix is just going to be else. And now the rest of the code should work. All right, so that's what I'm asking you guys. Are you sure this is part correct? Uh, all right, so this is all the code. I will go ahead and put a snapshot or you can click on this get pod. This is basically the overall source code of it. You guys can take a look at it. And does anybody have any question?
Does anybody have any questions? Nope. All right. If there's no question, then you guys can go ahead and leave the Zoom meeting now. We don't have any homework for, for this week. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and talk about um, some actual stuff that we can be doing some Python. See so you guys next week. Thanks for attending this class. See so you guys next week. Bye. 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 Thank you. No problem. See you guys next Bye. week. Bye. Bye, Thomas. Bye. All right.